we need to see who is the fool. A fool person is the one who ignores his end, the ending of his life on earth. The one who does not care about his eternity. Any human that cares not about their end on earth, about their eternal life, they are considered as fools. Also, fools are referred as is mentioned by St. Paul in these verses as the unwise as well. You can say ignorant, unwise, fool. So the fool is also referred to be unwise. Wise, why? Because you do not know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. In this particular verse, the Lord Jesus is sending a very important message to all of us. You see, the day and the hour, the Lord says, you do not know. Why? Because the day and the hour is only known in the thought of God. Every single one of us has a day and has an hour to be born and to depart at the same time. That departure, the Lord says, you don't know the day, neither the day nor the hour, because it is only known by God. Since you don't know the day nor the hour of your departure from this world, you need, therefore, to be wise, not a fool or unwise person. Please drop in your comments and questions. Please like and subscribe. Now in Job 14.5, he says, since his days are determined, his days are determined, the number of his months is with you. You have appointed his limit so that he cannot pass. Meaning God has determined how long you will live on the face of this earth. Someone will come along and say, Bishop, you know what? Technology now is advanced and the medical field is so advanced that we are, as doctors, we are giving a new life to so many people. We've just done um, a kidney transplant. We've put a battery and we made the heart pump for many more days and months and years. But my dear friend, even that was in the mind of God before creating anything. God knew a time will come where technology will advance, knowledge, human knowledge will increase, and they will start doing certain operations that was not possible previously or prior to that era. And they will think they are giving an extra time for this human being even that extra time was included by God before creating anyone or anything. So you lived an extra 20 years, God had already planned it. For there is nothing a surprise to God. You cannot add or subtract to the time frame God has given you. Cannot. So, Our days are determined by God. No one can pass those days which God has placed. I can assure you, God is perfect in every aspect, in every way, form or shape. When the time comes to the dot, the angel will come. And when the Lord calls that spirit, there is no power, neither in heaven, nor on earth, nor beneath it, to stop that moment that God had appointed from the very beginning. I have to go, I have to go. Nothing can stop the spirit from leaving this body when Jesus calls that spirit to him. When we surrender our life to the Lord Jesus, what happens? The Lord Jesus takes us and places us above the time. He takes us 
and places us all above the time. And when he takes us and put us above the time, there, there is no time. Therefore, time is not important anymore. It does not exist. So what is above the time? Eternity. Eternal life. Eternal life is a place where time ceases, does not exist. As someone put it this way, he said, time is a distraction to eternity. Time is a what? Distraction to eternity. For God to take the human race out of the eternal realm, he had to create time. For time took us out of the eternal realm. The moment time ceases, you are in the eternal realm. And in the eternal realm, you don't have choices. You don't have options. You don't have a second chance. You only have once and once forever. And God knew we will not last one split second in the eternal realm. Out of grace and mercy, he put us in a, in a realm that is governed by time. Therefore, time is to do with the temporal life. Faith is to do with the eternal life. I'll say it again. Therefore, time is to do with the temporal life. Faith is to do with the eternal life. I'm talking to you in a very simple terminology. St. Paul talks very deep, right? So now, everything that is governed by time is temporal. Everything that is governed by time is temporal. The tree is temporal. The fish is temporal. The bird is temporal. The plant is temporal. The human is temporal. Everything that is governed by time will end. Will end. Now, we are living in a realm that is governed by time. But the Lord Jesus says, when you surrender your life to me, when you give it to me, I, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I am the creator of time. I am the creator of time. Then when you give your life to me, I will take you into a place where time does not exist. And that's where I am, you will be with me. Where I am, there is no time because I am the creator of time. Therefore, I am above the time. St. Paul says, redeem the time for the days are evil. Literally, he is saying, stop wasting more time since you've already wasted enough. Stop wasting more time trying to fix the world. Stop wasting enough time trying to fix the past that you can't go back to or bring back. You see, we sit and cry over things that are already gone. I can't bring them back. I cannot. So what are we doing? I am wasting more time, valuable time, trying to fix something that is gone. Oh, why did I do this? Why did I say that? Why didn't I do that? Why didn't I go? Why didn't I listen? Too late. Get alive. Get up. Dust it off and look forward to a brighter future. Now, please pay attention. I beg you, by the grace of God, the Almighty God, pay attention. Everything we do, everything we say, everything we think of outside of Jesus Christ is evil. I'll say it again. Everything we do, everything we say, 
everything we think of outside of Jesus Christ is evil. Everything you do in this world outside of Jesus Christ is evil. You know why? Because this world, the Holy Bible is telling us, not me, it is God himself. He said, this world is placed not, not Satan is just the ruler. No, this world is placed in the bosom of Satan, meaning Satan has encircled this world in his bosom. He's grabbed it. It's his. It's his. Now, don't be shocked and say, why is this happening in the world? Because the one who is actually ruling over this world is the evil one. What are you going to expect from the evil one? Nothing but evil. Please wake up. We have been deceived by the temptation of the world. We have been deceived by the lust of the world. We have been deceived by the rainbow colors, which rainbow was the sign of God, yet shame on such generation to abuse this rainbow. Shame on you. All these colors, holidays, clubbing, dancing, eating, drinking, fashion, Botox, drugs, alcohol, gambling, and floating around in this world, it is all evil, evil, evil. There is no such thing as I was having fun. We need to define what is fun. Don't be a fool, be wise. Do not just throw words left, right, and center without thinking about what you're saying, without focusing on what you're saying, without weighing what you are about to say. You need to be wise. You need to be wise. Luke 24, 13. Those two friends were walking to a mouse. A mouse. A mouse. That's the proper pronunciation. A mouse. Those two friends that were walking, one of them happened to be, tradition say that it was Saint Luke. The one that's, whose name was not mentioned is Saint Luke. They were walking. And then the Lord Jesus was walking behind them and got to them. And he saw them talking and troubled and, you know, they were in a lot of turmoil. He said, what's going on? He said, they said to him, oh, it looks like you're a stranger. You have no idea what happened in the last few days in Jerusalem. He said, what? He said, oh, this Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this holy man of God, you know, he came and he said, I am it. I am the Messiah. I am the Savior. I'm the Redeemer. I'm God revealed in the flesh. We followed him for three years and a bit. And now they just crucified him and they put him in the tomb. And it looks like it's a hoax. We were lied to. He was a great manipulator and a deceiver. And now we're confused. We're lost. We're destroyed. So we said, Let's go back to our town. This is enough embarrassment already. We've had enough of this nonsense. Even some of the women who accompanied us, they went to the tomb and they came back and they said, they saw angels and the angels said to them, why are you seeking the, the living among the dead? He is alive, he's risen. But we didn't believe. So the Lord said, you foolish ones. Foolish, unwise. I just told you, you fools, a few days ago. I'll be handed over to authorities. I'll be crucified. 
I will be put in the tomb, I'll rise on the third day and I will see you again. How could you forget so quickly and so easily? Fools. Third one, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15, 36. St. Paul says, you fool. <laughs> And 37, he says, look at this, I'll read it. 1 Corinthians 15, 36. Foolish one, what you saw is not made alive unless it dies. Verse 37. And what you saw, you do not saw that body that shall be, but mere grain. Perhaps wheat or some other grain. What is St. Paul saying? You fool, foolish one. What you sow will not live unless it dies first. If, we, if people say, I'm not going to believe in God unless I understand. See, some people, they want to believe in God when they get it in their head. <laughs> Sorry doesn't work that way if everything is logic and we've got a problem here the the grain of wheat for as long as it's outside it's dead as long as it's outside it's dead now how do you know if this thing is dead or or alive movement movement is the sign of life when there is no movement it's a sign of death if someone is asleep, if I'm asleep and I'm not snoring, I'm not moving, I'm not making no sound, no noise, it's like I'm as if I'm dead. But the moment I move, oh, he's still alive. So movement is the sign of life. When you look at the grain of wheat, there is no sign of life because there is no movement in this grain. Now, how can your intellect accept this and believe in this that unless you bury this grain of wheat unless you kill it it will never live the moment you bury it then it becomes alive now that's illogical <laughs> that's that's crazy what are you saying you need to bury something for it to be alive he said yes if you don't bury it it's not it's, it's dead the moment you bury it it's alive it's the other way around then why don't you believe that when we bury our loved one, now they are alive. Not while they were on earth. You see, while on earth, we are that grain of wheat, we're dead. The moment we're buried, then we are truly alive. As one church father said, we are walking corpses. <laughs> Time is ticking, we're all dead. We are walking dead people, dead people walking. But the moment we are buried, we become alive, just like that grain of wheat. As long as it stays outside, it's dead. The moment you put it underground and all that soil on top of it, now it's alive. But you see, when you plant that seed and when you bury that seed, you get a much greater produce than one seed. You plant one, you get 40. But not only 40 seeds, you get a stump and you got a flower. You get a head as well. So what you planted is not what you're gonna get. What you're gonna get is much greater than what you planted initially. So he's in 1 Corinthians 15, St. Paul says, foolish one you realize that the grain of wheat, until it's dead, then it's alive. Why can't you believe until you are buried, then you are living? Why can't you believe it? Why when we bury someone, we mourn for them for years and years, especially Middle Eastern culture? Oh my, my, my. Middle Eastern, it's forever. <laughs> Uh, you need to learn from the Aussies. Karania, mate. The Aussies, they buried their loved one, they'll go back. Cheese, bro. 
Yeah, he was a great man, but it's a great wine as well. We don't sit fees crying, dressed up in black. I will never be happy again. Don't come ever and tell me, let's go to the wedding. I'm not going to no wedding. My loved one is dead. I am dead. I am dead. You're not. Wake up. If we believe in the Lord Jesus, then we are the children of the resurrection. We are the children of hope. See, Middle Eastern people were influenced by Middle Eastern cultures and religions, non-Christians. Christianity says, after the third day, the grave is empty. Christianity says, if you have Christ as Lord and Savior, then the tomb is empty. Do you cry for someone that is resurrected? Do you cry for someone that is the living Messiah? No. Do you mourn the living? No, you only mourn the dead. Then if you have Christ as your Lord and Savior, then there is no death. There is no death. In fact, the moment I am buried, then I can say I'm alive. For as long as I walk on earth, I'm dead. Why I'm dead? Because I won't tell you. <laughs> because I'll ask you this. Oh, sorry. When do we stop sinning? When we die? Absolutely. When we stop sinning? When we die. For as long as I'm in this flesh, my eyes are open. I can hear. I can see. I can smell. I can walk. I can touch. I am always susceptible to making mistakes. I see things, they make me fall. I hear things, they make me fall. I walk, they make me fall. I touch, they make me fall. For as long as I'm in the flesh, I am a sinner. And if, so, if anybody says that you are not a sinner, you are mistaken. For the Lord Jesus did not come to deprive you from your will. You see, the salvation of God to humanity does not mean that God took your will away from you because the will will always be with you because love, God will never take it away from you. And for as long as there is love, there is freedom. For, for there is freedom, there is choices. And as long as there are choices, there is the will. God will never take away the will from you. If he takes your will, he has to take your options, your freedom and love. You're no longer his child, you're a slave. God did not come to redeem slaves. He came to redeem us and make us sons of God. Free. The son is free. The slave is not. So therefore, my beloveds, since I have the will, I can do things my way, not God's. When do I stop sinning? When do I stop using my will when I'm buried? When I die, then and then only I can say, I cannot sin anymore. For when you cannot sin anymore, you're living. <laughs> because what is the wage of sin? Death. The moment you stop sinning, you're living. Now it all depends whether you live in heaven or elsewhere, but you're living. <laughs> you with me? Good. Now, when the Lord Jesus rose from the dead, look what he says. By the way, the Lord Jesus rose with the glorified body, spiritual three dimensional. You see the way you are now? This is the way you're going to rise. But in a spiritual body, this body will have no bones, no flesh, nothing. It's a spiritual three-dimensional. The way you rose, exactly the way you're going to rise in that glorified body. But you will have the same age of Jesus Christ and the same height of Jesus Christ. So if you came to this world for an hour and died, you will rise at the age of 33. And if you lived six, 969 years in the Old Testament, you will rise at the age of 33 and the height of Christ. The only difference 
between this glorified body and the Lord's glorified body, the wounds. Even the glorified body of Jesus Christ will have the wounds of the cross forever. So in the next life for eternities to come, we, when he comes, we will see the wounds in the hands and in the feet. We will see them. As a reminder for those who will make it to the Father's house, this will be a reminder for all of us. My wounds got you here. I kept them so that you never forget why you are here. It was not your, what you've done, it was what I have done on the cross that got you here. I'll be a reminder for all of us. And we'll love him forever and ever and ever. Now, when the Lord rose from the dead, there is no soul, S-O-U-L. There is the body and the, and, the, and the spirit only. Why? Because look at the Lord Jesus, what he said after resurrection. In Luke 24, 39, he says, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, I'm the risen one. Come, touch me. Behold my hands and my feet. Why are you just staring at me? Touch me. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. The spirit, what, has, does not have flesh and bones. He did not mention blood. The spirit does not have flesh nor bones. He didn't bring the word blood. Now, since there is no blood, there is no soul, because the soul lives in the blood. Now, the soul, one of the components that make up the soul is the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is the hard drive of your computer, the memory where everything is stored. In the second coming, the Lord will give you the glorified body and he will bring back your spirit and put it in this glorified body, but the soul will be wiped because the, your memory will be wiped then. Because when, you, when the Lord takes you to the Father's house, which is the final frontier, you cannot carry your memory with you there. Now, in paradise now, yes, your memory is with you. That's why the saints remember. Even those in Hades remember, because the soul is still there. But in the final judgment, the Lord will wipe your memory. Imagine this. The Father enters with the Lord. The Son goes to hell. How can this Father be happy and enjoying the presence of the Lord, remembering his Son is in hell? He will wipe it. So there, you will not see and recognize that this was my mother, this was my father, this was my, you will, rec you will not recognize none of that. The memory is gone. You'll only recognize one, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Everyone in the father's house will know Jesus only. Your father is standing next to you, you won't even know. It's your, it's your dad. The memory is gone. Because the Lord is fair, he says, you suffered enough on earth. The time has come to give you comfort and joy. I'll be your joy. I'll be your comfort. There will be no more aging, no more tears, no more Centrelink payments, no more nothing. How many years have you lost in this world? Let Jesus redeem it for you. Give your life to the Lord Jesus and he will make sure nothing is gone in vain. Nothing. So don't cry about the time that is gone by in absolute vanity. Focus on Christ and turn to him. And look at the crucified. For the crucified Messiah is my glory. I boost in no one but Jesus Christ being crucified. This is the glory of me, Christ crucified. And Paul says also 
in his epistle to the Romans 14, 8. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. We belong to Him. So it's beside the point whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Make sure you make sure that happens in your life. And how do you make sure that you belong to the Lord? Give Him everything. Give Him your life. Surrender everything to Jesus Christ and say, Lord, you take over. You look after me, my family, my loved ones, the entire people that are in my life whom you have given me and showed me. I surrender everything in your capable hands. I surrender everything. And then stop worrying. Stop pulling your hair out and say, my sister is not talking to me. My brother is not calling me. My wife has given me hell. My husband is not listening to me. No, the moment you give everything to the Lord, give it and walk in confidence that Christ has taken it on board. And now he is the responsible one for you and for everyone whom you have entrusted him with. Leave it to him. Leave it to him. Please drop in your comments and questions. Please like and subscribe. Verse 70, therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of, of the Lord is. Wow. Therefore do not be unwise. Unwise fools, in other words, ignorance. Do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Unwise or fools. The word fools is mentioned in the New Testament three times. Foolish fools is mentioned three times in the New Testament. Very quickly. Number one, in Luke 12, 20, the rich man. This rich man sat one night and he said, my fields have given me, you know, produce plentifully. There's plenty of it. So what do I do? Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, bring down some of these bonds, I'm going to extend them and I'll build more new bonds and then I'll fill them with all the produce the land has given me. And then I'll say to myself, self, enjoy. You've got plenty of wealth that will last you for many, 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 many years to come. Enjoy it. God came to him that night and he said, you fool. Your life will be taken away from you this very night. All this. What for? Yes, the land gave you plenty of produce. Correct. Yes, this produce will last you for many, many, many years to come. Correct. But my dear friend, are you going to live these many, many years? No guarantee, you fool. No guarantee. What are you planning? What are you doing? Wake up. Wake up. Please wake up. Jesus Christ is the only truth. I don't care you're a Christian, you're a Muslim, you're a Buddhist, you're a Hindu. You're an atheist. I don't care what your religion is and what your color is and your race is. And I don't care with all love and respect. Believe me, I'm saying this. Believe you me. Believe you me. You die as a Muslim. You die as a Buddhist. You die as an atheist. You die as a Hindu. You die as a Christian. Believe you me. You will only face one. Only there is, there's only one God. This God, his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The only one. This is the truth. Nothing to do with this uniform. Nothing to do with this outfit. Nothing. Christ has got nothing to do with this. Doesn't matter I dress up in a long skirt with a tent covering my head. This is very ancient, by the way. 
This goes back all the way to the third century. Yes, very ancient. But, but Christ is the true divine God. We need the Lord Jesus, my beloved. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. How do I know what the world, what the will of the Lord? How do I know? What is the will of the Lord in my life? We ask this question a lot. What is the will of the Lord in my life? How do I know what is the will of the Lord in my life? Yet this world is placed in the bosom of Satan and the days are evil. How would I know? He says, you want to know what the will of the Lord in your life is? Read verse 18. And do not be drunk with wine in which is um, this uh, the, uh, dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. How will you know what the will of the Lord in your life is when you stop being drunk by wine, but rather filled by the Holy Spirit? The day you are filled by the Holy Spirit, you will know what the will of the Lord in your life is because the only one who can reveal to you what is the will of the Lord in your life is the Lord himself. And the only way the Lord will reveal it is through his Holy Spirit that is dwelling in you. Now, how do I make the Holy Spirit work in me? Verse 19, this brain, God put it there for it to think. It's got to do a job. You can't stop it. This is to think. If you do not, if we do not, if we do not preoccupy this with the word of God, Psalms, it's going to be preoccupied with the word of the world, which is placed in the bosom of Satan. If you do not get busy with Christ, you will end up being busy with Satan. Because this is it. It's either the light, Jesus Christ, or the darkness, Satan. You can never claim to be free. Please give up on this nonsense. You're not free. There is no such thing as it's freedom. There is no such thing as democracy. Please stop listening to the mainstream media. Please stop listening to the Western world speaking about United Nations human rights. This is evil nonsense. They have enslaved the human race under the banner of human rights. I beg you, they have enslaved the human being under the banner of human rights. Because there is no freedom in the world. The world is placed in the bosom of Satan, the killer of mankind, the snake, the poisonous cobra. The Lord has revealed Satan in 2020. He, he made him surface up. Satan would never surface up. He's a submarine. He likes to do things in disguise, in quietness, in the depth. But the Lord forced him to surface up. He wants humanity to see. He's opening the eyes of those who are willing to listen to Christ. Those who are willing to listen to Christ, he is opening your eyes. What has been happening in, in, in recent years it is absolute satanic, but all done in the name of human rights, democracy, United Nations. United Nations is built on something of the ancient times, the Tower of Babylon, where I come from, baby. <laughs> Hello, Habibi. <laughs> United Nations is a replica of the Tower of Babel thousands and ye of years ago. What is the Tower of Babel? Human rights, not God's rights. If you speak about God's rights, they will stone you to death. They will cast you out of their assembly. They will ridicule you and they will persecute you. How dare you say God disapproves of this? Look what they did to the Supreme Court in America for going against abortion. Oh, they slain this, this, this uh, judge, poor thing. But you know what? 
God bless you, my dear friend. You're a man of God and you are a great judge. Well done. Put your hands together for this judge. You have your body and you do whatever you want with it. It's not your body. You little fool. And this baby in that womb is not yours to do whatever you want. Life is not yours. Simply, simply, did you create this life? No. Since you are not the creator, then be quiet. You have no right. You have no right to do whatever with this life. Neither your life is yours, nor the baby in your room is yours. It is of God's. He's the only one that has the right to put it or to take it. Humanity have become fools, unwise, not discerning the evil days we're living in. Not discerning. When do we stop sinning? When we die? Absolutely. When we stop sinning, when we die. For as long as I'm in this flesh, my eyes are open, I can hear, I can see, I can smell, I can walk, I can touch. I am always susceptible to making mistakes. I see things, they make me fall. I hear things, they make me fall. I walk, they make me fall. I touch, they make me fall. For as long as I'm in the flesh, I am a sinner. And if, so, if anybody says that you are not a sinner, you are mistaken. For the Lord Jesus did not come to deprive you from your will. You see, the salvation of God to humanity does not mean that God took your will away from you because the will will always be with you because love, God will never take it away from you. And for as long as there is love, there is freedom. For, for there is freedom, there is choices. And as long as there are choices, there is the will. God will never take away the will from you. If he takes your will, he has to take your options, your freedom and love. You're no longer his child, you're a slave. God did not come to redeem slaves. He came to redeem us and make us sons of God. Free. The son is free. The slave is not. So therefore, my beloveds, since I have the will, I can do things my way, not God's. When do I stop sinning? When do I stop using my will when I'm buried? When I die, then and then only I can say, I cannot sin anymore. For when you cannot sin anymore, you're living. <laughs> because what is the wage of sin? Death. The moment you stop sinning, you're living. Now it all depends whether you live in heaven or elsewhere, but you're living. <laughs> you with me? To sum it up, at home, invite Christ. Family, mom, dad, children. When you're talking a normal conversation, bring Jesus and thank him. When you talk to each other and laugh, say thank you, Lord, for this wonderful moment. When you put the food on the table and you eat together as one family, thank the Lord, say, Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you for this moment that the family is sitting at, one, at the same table eating together. When you are looking at the face of your wife, husband, son, daughter, brother, sister, thank the Lord, regardless what is happening, what if there are frictions or not, regardless, but thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank Him. Thank Him in every moment, good times and bad times, in sickness and in health, in richness and in poorness. Thank Him always. Thank Him. He will reveal His will when you thank Him. 
And then singing to him, don't, don't sing to the world, sing to Christ. So many beautiful voices yet lost, singing vanity. Hollywood. Those who went and became famous in Hollywood, where are they? Look what fame does. Look the environment you allow yourself to be, how influential it is. Don't tell me I can handle it. Don't say I know what I'm doing. Don't say, you know, it's safe, it's okay, I'll go with my friends, but I know what I'm going to do when I'm going to say. No, you cannot. After a little while, they will influence you, my dear friend. And before you know it, you do exactly as they do and even more. Sing to the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. You know, when you sing, a song that has the name of Jesus in it, the moment you invoke his holy name, you are in a different realm. You are engulfed from within. You are filled. You are enriched. You become someone else. So beautiful. All your miseries are gone. All your worries are gone. And sing melodies in your heart to the Lord. That's the life of sanctity, the heart is the secret place where the relationship between you and Christ is done in secret. There are things you don't tell everyone about it. When Jesus comes, you don't come and say, oh, Jesus said this and Jesus said that, and you run and you tell everyone, no, no, no. What you say should be just a drop in the ocean compared to what you keep in secret. It's an intimate one. It's between him and you. The world needs not to know of. Why should they know? This is between my, my heavenly groom and the bride. This is an intimate one. It's a honeymoon. It's a holy, holy, holy relationship. Holy, not filthy, holy. Holy. Where the Lord comes and tells you things and it stays between him and you. And you know and even if the Pope talks, the Lord told me. Even if the Patriarch talks, but the Lord told me. Even if the whole world talks, but the Lord told me. And what matters is the Lord, not anyone else. No one comes before the Lord, no one. Psalms hymns, psalms, life of prayer. Start praying. Life of thanksgiving, hymns. Thank him. Even if you're in trouble, thank him. Not only in successes, thank him in failures. Spiritual songs, life of happiness. Be happy in the Lord. Let the Lord be your happiness, not the occasions and the moments uh, and, and, and whatever is happening around you. Forget about what is happening around you. Let Christ be your happiness. And with singing, sing to the Lord, stop singing to the world. It's a life of advancement and growth. You will grow spiritually and you will go forward, not backward. And finally, five, making melody in your hearts, a life of sanctity. Live a life of secrecy. Keep things between you and the Lord only. No one else is to know. This is the characteristic of a wise. But it's not me. That's the thing. Don't ever think this piece of a wreck is screaming. No, it's the Lord. Believe you me, the moment I walk out of this door, I'm a different person. This is the Holy Spirit. This is Christ speaking to his children. He is saying, wake up, redeem the time for the days are evil. Can't you see? What else do you want me to reveal to you to prove 
that this is an evil time and generation. What else? And for church leaders to come out so and say everything is fine. Everything is fine. Yes, everything is fine in the Lord. But don't tell me what's happening in the world is from God. If you say that, don't stand before me because only God can save you from me. Only God. Don't stand. If you're saying this is from God, yes, this is a disciplinary action from God, yes, but through Satan. God is the source of life, not death. God is the source of light, not darkness. But he left Satan to do God's will. He knew humanity are not going to listen to him, so he left Satan as a disciplinary action in the negative way. God cannot punish you in a negative. Therefore, he left Satan to use him as a tool. So what's been happening? 100% evil. Nowadays, people are joyous for evil things. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You cannot refer to your child as he or she. You need to say it. Well, if this child is an it, then you are an it. And since you're an it, then you are nothing to me. The next time you talk, I'll say, who is it? It is, it was. <laughs> oh, one of these days. I only talk to a human, not an it. Do you build a relationship with a rock? Do you build a relationship with a plant or with a human? The rock is it, the plant is it, the human is not it. It's not it. We're talking foolishly here. We've lost touch with the true divine God the source of wisdom, the source of wisdom. Please drop in your comments and questions. Please like and subscribe. We need to talk to each other in the love of Christ. We need to invite Christ in our conversations. Do not speak vanity. Please, I beg you, if you are sitting in a place, in an assembly, read Psalm 1. Psalm 1, it says, don't sit in the assembly of the wicked. They sit and talk nonsense. Oh, I went and bought this, I went and got this, I went and did this, I went and... What is this? What is this? How are you? Are you okay? Remember Jesus Christ, what he says. My dear friend, have you been to church lately? My dear sister, have you read the Bible lately? My brother, dad, mom, friend, cousin, we need to be with the Lord. Now this is speaking to one another in Psalms. If you have a life of prayer, that is Psalms. Speak to one another in Psalms, have a life of prayer. Also speak to one another with what? Hymns, the life of thanksgiving. Speak to one another in spiritual songs, the life of happiness. Speak to one another 
in a way of singing the life of advancement and growth and speak to one another in making melody in your hearts for the Lord. That is the life of sanctity. If you have a life of prayer, a life of thanksgiving, a life of happiness, a life of advancement and growth, and a life of sanctity, the Holy Spirit will reveal what the will of the Lord is in your life. We're too busy with this world, and then we say, how come God is not telling me what he wants from me? Of course he won't. You are busy with Satan. Why would God tell you? You are gone and placed yourself in the bosom of Satan. Why would the Lord be interested to reveal his will in your life? Where is the fairness? Do you see, my beloved friend, if you spend your time in the club, why would Jesus tell you what he expects of you? If you spend your time in drinking and gambling and drugs, why would the Lord reveal his will to you? If you spend your time in the dark alleys and the Star City casinos and in Las Vegas and King's Cross, why would the Lord Jesus reveal his will to you? Tell me why. It's not fair. If the Lord reveals his will, then he is not fair. And far from him, he is the fair one. But come to church, read his word, sing to him, love him, thank him always, and see if the Lord is going to tell you or not. He will, for he is faithful to every promise he made, he delivers. He delivers.